Com. You know what? I can't stand this anymore. This headphone cable has been getting on my nerves for such a long time. It's time to replace it. Now given these headphones are practically 50 years old, they're probably old enough and good enough to where repairing them is actually possible. So we're going to do that. I also had this exact same problem with my other headphones, which this cable is such a tangled mess anyways, I've been wanting to replace it. But yes, I'm tired of only hearing out of one ear half the time. I think you go crazy. Alright, so before we get started, let's go over some of the features and differences between these headphones. Because of course, this one has the regular size jack. This one has the mini jack. These are both stereo headphones, which means they have three conductors. They have the tip ring sleeve connector, also known as a TRS. Or as if it was mono, it would look like this with just the tip and the sleeve. You definitely don't want to use this, otherwise you get two left channels out of both ears. Secondly, how are they connected? This one has a cable going to each headphone and it splits off right here. So basically this is two, two conductor cables merging. Well, it shares the same ground so it connects to three conductors at the plug. This one, however, just connects to the left side and it has a wire going through to the right side. So it's just three conductor cable. This is the cable we're getting rid of because it's causing problems. I bought some new cable and likewise for the small one I got a smaller cable. I'm gonna start with the small ones because it's probably more of a challenge to solder the smaller connector. Now I didn't mention this yet but notice how this one is the molded connector. This one is the good style where you can actually open it up and desolder everything. So I'm going to be able to reuse this one. This one's just going to have to get chopped off. I bought a replacement and this is this style. You can unscrew it. I highly doubt you're going to find a headphone that's stocked with a mini jack like this, but they make them in case you have to do this. All right, next step, we need to find how to open these up. They hid the screws kind of underneath the foam. So I'm going to do my best, there's one, to unscrew it without ripping the foam off. Like that. There it is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and desolder these. Also important to note that the cable has a knot right here, so you don't accidentally pull it out of the headphone unintentionally. So I'm gonna do that with the new cable. So I'm gonna strip the cables, hope I don't lose all the copper. Now given that this is a three conductor cable and we only need two conductors, I'm just gonna chop off the respective one for the ones that I need. So for the right one, I'll just use the red the left one, I'll just use the white. And the, the shielding is probably way too much to solder on, so I'll trim that down also. Alright, so I've got the speakers soldered back and screwed back on. And then over here, the connection between the two cables and the main cable. I know there's probably a better way to tie these around and stagger the heat shrink tubing so they don't be right on top of each other but I just did my best. I'm gonna then slide another piece of heat shrink tubing over that and then solder on the jack plug. Oh and one thing that I had to take out were these two little plastic I think they're called stress reliefs that were kinda hold the cable and the end of here because the new cable being a three conductor was too fat to fit through them so I mean, I think it's okay, because I tied it there, it's not coming out, it won't be under any stress. So there we have it, the three conductors soldered onto the connector. I'm pretty sure that the one that pins right in the middle is the left, because that goes all the way through to the end. 
So left, right, and then ground on the outside. Then all this stuff slides over and screw it on and we're done. So this little plastic thing prevents the stuff from shorting out on the housing. I'm pretty sure the first time I ever did this, I forgot to slide these things on before soldering it, leading to monster headaches, so. That's right. I actually did some that worked on the first time. So these headphones are good. By the way, this album, The Cliff by A Cult, is freaking amazing. I'd highly recommend it. So, as to that, let's fix the other headphones. Okay, we're ready for round two. This should be easier because I probably only have to solder one of the speakers. And where the heck is the screwdriver hole? I think that is a trick to this one. There it is. Oh, look at that. Don't you just love old electronics that have so much empty space inside of them? Makes it so much easier to work with. So, I mean, easy enough, right? Green is left, red is right. Let's get to soldering. These headphones were like my pride and joy back in high school. I would wear them around my neck walk around campus blasting really explicit songs. I thought I was so cool. Because no one else had headphones, like actual headphones. Just those lame earbuds. And actually, on in PE on run days, they would let us listen to music while we were running. And I still use these massive headphones. And don't ask me why, but my favorite song on run days was that remix of Circus by Britney Spears. Alright, here we go. So... They gave me such generous lengths of cable, too. I need to splice this one off. And this one... I might as well desolder it to be proper. If I can do it without burning myself. That was easy. Hopefully I don't have to drill this hole bigger because the new cable is slightly bigger. Alright, that cable is out. Okay, this needs to be stripped. There we go. And I'm going to cut off some of this shielding because there's quite a lot of it. Well, I guess on this one I at least have the option to drill it bigger. Get down to business. I need heat shrink tubing. Do not forget that. And I don't think I was actually held in with anything. It was just either glued in or the illusion that it was glued in with this thing on top of it. Nice. I mean, as cool as these coiled cables look, they end up being more of a hassle than I think they're worth. Because you try to stretch it, then it's trying to pull itself back and it ends up just I don't know. Alright, now I'm going to desolder the jack plug. But the stress relief is going to be too small for this one. Why is the stress relief the part that's causing me the most stress? 
All right, whatever. I'll just use a heat shrink tubing like last time. I don't necessarily need to insulate this because the cap is plastic. Like on those metal connectors, there's like a, a shielding in there already. So this will just leave it like that. And there we go. It looks so silly with the mismatch. We have brown, yellow, and blue. As long as it works, I'm happy. So as an added bonus, here's my new mini jack to quarter inch adapter. I made this years ago from a... If you're a cyclist, you might recognize what this is. It's one of those patch kits made in Germany. The box for it. So I just put a quarter inch connector and a cable with the mini jack on it. Way better than those ones that are like that big that add so much torque to your connection and break off inside here. So let's try it out. Bringing me back to high school. So I got it all. Oh yeah, it works! And this camera has stereo mics, so you should be able to tell it's working. So there we go, headphones fixed after way too long using them. Terrible. Greens and Machines, I'm Dacaster D, signing off.